All right, so I think I'll get going here. Um, I've started recording again. Um, so yeah, hi, welcome to our kind of our second week here. Um, so as usual, if, if you have questions, uh, this is mostly meant um, if, if people want to come and ask questions about things, uh, to uh, ask them, I, I can give specific help for people that are working on assignments and stuff. So I usually mostly concentrate on assignments and things. Um, so I thought I would start probably with the assignment, uh, the, the written problem set, although it's a little bit late. Uh, but if anybody has any la last minute questions about those, let me know. Um, I've had a few questions, but I think most people are kind of getting it. So, um, so I, I, I know I put this in this, in the, um, an announcement somewhere, at least I hope I put it in the announcement somewhere, but if it wasn't clear. So for some of these, uh, you, you've got three instructions, so you might end up filling in step one, two, which is the first fetch cycle for the first instruction, and then step three and four for the second instruction, and step five and six for the third instruction. Uh, but then at that point, your program counter would be at 303, and you don't have an instruction for 303. So if that's the case, if you fill in these six and your program counter um, ends up at 303, uh, you don't know what to fetch next, and you're done at that point. So. Um, if I wasn't clear about that, that's um, you don't you don't have to do anything after that. So you might only fill in the first six of these steps or the first three of these fetch execute cycles. Or conversely, um, I mean there are some jump instructions. So I've got some infinite loops on some of these. So it can be the case that you fill in you know all these, jump back up, um, and start executing some of the instructions again, um, and um, you know, in that case, I mean, it would actually go on forever, right? So you can just stop after filling in the first eight, you know, the first four fetch execute cycles. Um, all right. Uh, the other thing, I mean, um, I, I always get a question about this. Um, so some, at least one of the, the questions there, you end up with a negative number, or you probably should have, and that's a hint if you didn't. Um, so you should have, it should have ended up with a result that was negative. So in that case, you're supposed to use this defined format. So this is the integer format, kind of in binary, of how you represent integer numbers in our hypothetical machine, right? So the first bit is a sign bit, and then they all, all the rest of the 15 are magnitude bits, okay? So, you know, we're not using anything complicated like two's complement or something like that. So the, the, the most correct answer for a negative number, like if I want to represent negative three, the magnitude, you just have use the 15 bits, you know, to represent um, a, a three uh, in binary, which would be just, um, you know, all zeros except for one one at the end is, is three in binary, right? Two to the zero plus two to the one gives you a three and then the rest are zeros. But then if it's a negative three, so a positive three, then, then the most significant bit would be a one, okay? So. And then, you know, if it's not clear, kind of another hint on that, if, if you convert a binary one, zero, 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 one, one, with uh, you know, which 16 bits. If you convert that to hex, um, that does not convert to one zero zero three. That's that's not the correct conversion of a one at the most significant bit with two ones at the end for the least significant bits representing three there. So it's not one zero zero three. It's it's something else. So in case you did that incorrectly because one would be zero, 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 one, right? So the first four bits represent the first hex character if you're converting from binary to hexadecimal. So one is actually zero, 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 one um, as your first four bits. Um, and that's not what you have for a negative number. So. Um, okay, so I'm also going to talk about the first assignment unless somebody wanted to ask uh, other questions about um, the problem set one.
in our announcements, I think I had uh, clarified um, those things basically. Yeah, those were the two things I mostly talked about. So, uh, recommendation here. So, if you want to, um, I highly recommend. Um, there's like a set of ten videos here on this MIT course. Um, so, especially if you want to learn a little bit more about using a Unix shell, um, that's one of the week's topics um, in this little course. Um, another week's topic is using a build system like Make, like we're using. So, if you want to learn more details about how make works or build systems. Um, there's another, another one of these about Git, source uh, revision control systems and Git in particular. So those are all um, some real good resources to take a look at if you want more details on some of the stuff. So you know, th this course really isn't about those, but those are things that would really be good that you've been, had some experience with um, getting an undergraduate um, degree in computer science. So. Um, all right, so yeah, I was mostly going to talk about the probably the the programming assignment. Okay, so at this point, um, I mean, th at this point, you really should have your development environment up and running. If you don't, you know, try and get with me. You know, it is time um, to be using it. Um, Um, and, and yeah, if you haven't looked at or started on assignment one, you probably do want to do that today. So a lot of people don't find, especially for this first one, won't find a week to be enough time if you're not spending a couple of hours on it uh, each day, an hour or two at least. So, so oh, another thing, I mean, I did have some questions on this, but um, um, I had this in an announcement, but um, for this class, um, if you get an error about uh, can't link in simulator exception, that means that you do have to build the, the lib subdirectory first. So um, from your repository, uh, you need to just go into this lib directory and make certain that, that the library in there is built. So the result of, of building this library is you get this .a file. .a stands for an archive. Uh, dot, these are basically like uh, dynamic link libraries, if you know what a DLL is in, in the Windows context. This is really just a, a collection of compiled code that you can link in with um, other uh, compiled code to create an executable. Right? So we use, we use these, the simulator exception class and all the assignments. Um, uh, for this class, so it, it, but but you should have to only build that once, and then it'll correctly link. So I think I talked about that in our previous help session. So um, it's good that you. Um, pay attention to our written assignment because in the first um, program assignment, we're going to be implementing uh, as a simulation the same hypothetical machine from our textbook chapter one and from your written problem set one. Okay, so the, the whole purpose of this simulator that we're building uh, is so that we can read in files that specify um, a simulation uh, and run them. And in fact, I should have kept this up here. Um, your first, um, I'll just show this real quickly. So the, the first problem you had, the first question you had for problem set one starts off with memory initially with this. So, so we've got um, instructions 4940, 5941, and 2941 at memory addresses 300 through 302. And, and we have some things that end up being used as data at memory addresses 940 and 941, okay? So, um, if you browse through and look at the sim files, um, you'll find that um, there's one. The dot sims are um, um, are the inputs for the simulator, and the dot results are the output, um, the, the correct output. If your simulation is working correctly, so you can open these up with a plain text editor um, like Visual Studio Code um, or any plain text editor. They're, they're actually just regular text files.
but uh, we should be able to look at this um, program problem set zero one and open it up here. So um, oh, kind of as a reminder, if you are using Visual Studio Code, um, I mean, it, if, if you close it and reopen it, it'll come back and have your, um, uh, it'll, it'll kind of remember where you were, but the first time you open it up, um, you won't have any folder open up. Um, so to work on projects in this class, the build system is set up. Uh, you should always open up at the top level. So you want to do a file, open folder, um, if that was too fast for you, it was the open folder. Um, and you want to navigate to the top level of the repository. So you don't, you don't want to open up the folder down like at a particular assignment. You want to open it up um, just at the very top level. So that's kind of how the build system is set up to work for this assignment here, right? So um, back to these files that you'll find in assignment one. Close these here. Um, you'll find all these uh, simulation files uh, should be under the um, sim file subdirectory, right? Um, including as what I was trying to get at was uh, if you want to, you can open up, uh, we'll, we'll see this later, maybe Monday next week, we we'll, might talk a little bit more about this, but you'll see what typically what these, what, what looks like as input for the simulation. So um, this is the same program um, for the hypothetical machine that you were supposed to simulate for um, the, the question one for problem set one. Okay. So starting with, with these instructions in memory three zero through, 301 and 302, um, and this data, uh, yeah, so it isn't the, quite the same. Um, so it's supposed to be the same, I'll have to check that out, but, but, but kind of the same format, and, and also some indications of um, what the initial value of the program counter is, what the initial value of the accumulator is, um, and this represents what the valid locations are in, what the valid memory addresses are in the memory that we're simulating in the simulator. Um, so anyway, for the assignment description, um, I mean, you can open up that PDF. Um, another thing, um, you could also look at the, the markdown file is, is actually what's used to generate the PDF. Um, this is kind of another nice thing about Visual Studio Code and also you can do the same thing with Sublime or Atom or, or Emacs. Um, MDs are markdown files. This, this is becoming pretty common. Um, so it's really just a markup language, like HTML or something like that. So, so you know, the, the pounds represent um, sections and double stars for boldness, uh, for bolding text and things like that, right? Um, you can, I mean, you could just look at the assignment description just in plain, in, in the markdown format. Um, you can render the markdown um, in uh, Visual Studio Code. So if you do view, um, I think it's, is that right? Uh, or if you right click on here, you can open a preview. Yeah, so open preview. Um, I, don't, I don't remember if there's another way in the menu up here that you can get to open preview, but I know you can right click on this um, to open the preview or use the control shift V if you want to. So anyway, so that's, again, that's the, um, the assignment here. So both the PDF and this preview are generated from the, uh, the markdown file. So it should have the same contents here for um, assignment one. So, um, so once again, I mean, the, as it's given to you, um, this, this is your normal um, workflow for working on the assignments in this class. Um, so, so we use this, what's known as make, it's a build tool to, to set up um, uh, the build system for our assignment here. Um, and, and you can do this from the command line or you can do this uh, inside of Visual Studio or at least you can do the make clean, make and make tests inside of Visual Studio. So I've shown that before, I believe, but um, 
let's say we have our assignment one tests open up here. Let's open that up. Let me go ahead and put my preview over here on the right, I think, so we'll split the pane. So, um, yeah, we can do a clean, control shift C um, is the keyboard com combination I've got for clean. Um, and that should uh, run the make clean. Uh, and again, you could do that there, or you could do the same thing from the command line. If, if you're in the assignment one, zero one directory, I could do the make clean, and I could do make using control shift B to build. Uh, that does a make all or build all. Oh, another thing, um, when I've been setting up people with their dev box, I should probably make an announcement about this or discuss this a bit, but um, some people were thinking that they were having performance issues, and I don't think they really were exactly, but um, it, it, it does take a significant amount of time to compile these test files, um, and that's another thing that I'd kind of like to talk about some more today maybe, because we're using a, a unit test framework called the, the Sketch unit test framework. Um, and you can Google that if you want to, to get more information about it. But it's a framework for building unit tests for C++ projects. It's, it's relatively very simple and lightweight. So, so it's good for small kind of projects to, to add unit testing to them. But the downside is, is that it uses uh, templates in C++ and these are notoriously um, difficult to compile, can take a long time to compile. So the, the result is to cut to the chase is that Anytime you have to recompile the assignment one tests.cpp file, it does take 20, 30 seconds to, to compile that. Um, and and that, that'll be true even if you were running this um, instead of in a virtual machine on, on a relatively snappy machine. It, it, it still takes a notice, noticeable amount of time to compile this, all right? But because we've set this up as a build system, you should only have to compile this file one time. So the, the way that most build systems work is that if, if, you want, if you want to rebuild your project, it'll check and it will only rebuild the files that are out of date that need to be recompiled. So normally you're not going to be making any changes to the assignment on test. So once it's built, um, it won't have to be recompiled again. You'll just be making changes down into, like in this assignment, you'll be adding code to hypothetical machine simulator.cpp and HPP. Um, and it will, um, um, build those. Um, so you should, it should build cleanly for you. I, I suspect I've got code in here from the last time I did this. Let me do a, uh, I'm going to do like a git restore in order to get my project back to a clean slate here um, because I've probably got some old example of solution in there. So um, 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 I would show you me doing this, but it's probably not going to work for me in my um, dev box because of the way that I checked out this repository. I'll, I'll try it. So if I wanted to, I could tell it to restore, to throw out, uh, because yeah, I can see that um, assignment one test is modified and hypothetical machine simulator has been modified. So I could throw those away and get back to what I had in the repository. Oh, okay, well that worked. So um, if you ever, I mean, you want to be careful with this. This actually just threw away any changes that I had locally there. Um, but I could do the same thing with uh, with those files. So. So. I'm going to do a clean again and try to build one more time. So if that restore worked, I should be back to the same set of files that you guys uh, should have for the first assignment here. So, so I, like I'm saying, this, this will take a while to build, um, but normally that's not really an issue because normally once you've built it once, you won't have to recompile it again. You'll only have to change um, add code. Um, to the, in this assignment, to the hypothetical machine simulator.cpp and the hypothetical machine simulator.header um, file, HPP. So, um, 
So I'm waiting to see if, if my first compile works. Let's let's. Uh, so what I normally do a class like this, I I get you started. So so I even complete the first tasks. So today maybe I'll go as far as completing the first task, and then maybe next Monday um, we can take questions. At that point, hopefully more people will be more into this, and we can look at more, uh, uh, give some more examples of of doing stuff here for these assignments. So. Um, So what you normally do is, is I mean, you should read the assignment description, but um, I, I, for each one of the assignments under what I call the unit test tasks uh, will be kind of the more specific details. So this is, this is, this is all the stuff up here is kind of just some introduction. And for this first assignment, I talk a little bit about some general things that, that are true for all the assignments, like a little bit about the build process that I've been talking about here and, and other things. Uh, but but yeah, so when you're ready to implement the assignment, uh, I give more detailed instructions step by step. So you want to you, you'd want to start with the step one here, of um, in the unit test tasks for this first assignment. So yeah, normally when you have the preview up, um, it kind of synchronizes both the, the the markdown, you know, the raw markdown. Uh, it synchronizes your location with where you are in the preview, but I really don't want my markdown because I'm not going to edit that. So I'm going to get rid of that, uh, but just leave the preview up there so we can read it side by side. So yeah, the, the way I give it to you, it should build. Um, so I think I talked a little bit about this, but um, um, notice the output from the build here. So it, it first built the assignment one test, which hold these unit tests. Um, and it, it, it just compiled that into what's known as an object file. Then it compiled the hypothetical machine simulator, that CPP, into a separate object file. And then it linked those together into a, into a final executable. And it also linked in the simulator exception library that I talked about, right? So it actually linked together three object files, assignment one test dot object file, hypothetical machine simulator object file, and the lib simulator exception uh, dot a archive. Um, object file, made a test executable, right? Uh, and then likewise, we also build, a, every one of these assignments uh, will we'll create what I call the unit test executable called test and the sim executable for running the actual simulations. Um, and probably I'll talk a lot more about that maybe on Monday. So we'll, we'll have enough today just to kind of get you started on the uh, first assignment here. So. Okay, so this is where you want to be, is, 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 um, and, and when you first um, do your first build, it should build cleanly for you, um, and, but, but um, when you run the unit tests, and again, you can run your unit tests with Control-Shift-T if you're using Visual Studio, the way I had it set for you. So Control-Shift-T will actually run these unit tests, and you'll find that they run, but um, you know, a lot of them fail. So normally what you want to do is go up and find where your first failing unit test is. So scroll all the way back up to the top here. And in this case, um, we're, we're, we're failing the very first test, so, so this one, right? So the way to read this, so, so we're, we're calling a function, um, so, so we're building a C++ class uh, of, of t the, the name of the class is Hypothetical Machine Simulator, right? And, and we're, we, we create an instance of our simulator called Sim, and then we try to call a member function. So we tried to invoke, well, we actually, we invoked initialized memory. I already wrote this one for you. Um, uh, and then we try and test, um, we called the get memory base address, right? Um, oh no, I didn't write initialized memory. So that, that is your first task here. So you actually do have to do something. So in order to get these to work correctly, um, you have to um, write a little bit bit of code in initialized memory here. So, so anyway, if, if we ask for the, the memory base address, um, um, initialized memory, the first value is supposed to be the base address, and then the second address is the bounds address. So that's the beginning and ending of the memory that we're trying to simulate. So, you know, once again, basically we're, we're simulating like, like on your hypothetical machine, uh, the problem set here. So, uh, we set up our simulation to simulate uh, memory addresses from 300 up to 1,000. We, we really only need it from 300 to 941, but, um, but we just did it from 300 to 1,000 um, uh, in this case here, all right? Um, 
but yeah, we're, we're expecting it after we initialize it with a base address of 300 that when we ask to get the ba memory base address that returns 300, but it's returning zero right now, okay? So, um, so notice, um, once again, not, if, if, I re, if I rebuild now without making any changes to my code, um, it will say there's nothing to be done. So again, when, whenever you invoke the build using any kind of an automated build system like make, um, it will only rebuild what's out of date, right? So since I didn't make any changes, nothing needs to be rebuilt, okay? So, um, Let's look at implementing the initialized memory, or maybe I'll talk a little bit first about um, the .hpp file, okay? So um, I'm, I'm assuming that you know a little bit about writing classes in an object-oriented language, not necessarily C++, but uh, you know, if you're familiar with Java or Python or other languages, um, the ideas are the same. So we're, we're building um, an object-oriented programming here. We've got one main class, a C++ class, called Hypothetical Machine Simulator. Uh, we've got a, a bunch of private data, private member variables of our class, like the memory base address, the memory bounds address, some other things that I'll talk about. And then we've got public methods that you can invoke on the, the class, including the initialized memory um, and the, the get memory base address, the get memory bounds address, which are the first ones that we're kind of working on here, right? And again, you know, feel free to shout out questions or stuff as I'm doing this stuff here. So. Um, let me, let's leave the header open here. Um, so let's find the initialized memory over in, so, so the, the, over in the header file is just the declaration of our class. So the actual implementation of all these member functions is separated over to the corresponding .cpp file. So this is very common in C++ and, and um, some other languages. So. Um, so if you scroll down here, so you'll see, I mean, I've, I've already given you constructors for this class, or at least the beginnings of some constructors, um, and a few other methods, a reset method. I already wrote the load program. So this loads a program from, the, from a file, like I was showing you, um, like this sim file um, into, to be simulated. But we'll see that maybe on Monday some more. Uh, but yeah, down here is the initialized memory, um, and it's, it's, it doesn't do anything. So initialized memory, again, this is C++, but, but to read this, it's a member function of the hypothetical machine. So it's a member function of the hypothetical machine, but uh, that, that takes um, two parameters, the memory base address, the memory bound address, and it's, um, and it's a void function, so it doesn't return anything. So the, the signature here should be exactly the same as the signature here with, with the, the only difference being that in C++, the way you specify something as a member function of a class is you put the name of the class colon colon in front of the, the function name for, for a member function. So this is the initialized member is, memory is a member function of the hypothetical machine simulator here. So. Um, and if we go kind of further down, let's look at the, um, so when we actually did the tests here, we were actually calling get memory base address, get memory bounds address, and get memory size, right? So if we look at those, those are actually already implemented. You won't have to change these. I think they are. Uh, those are a little bit further down here. That should execute, I think, or did I already pass them? So, again, you know, this is not, I'm, I'm kind of showing you bad, um, um, you know, I, if I was normally doing this, I would probably do search through here instead of scrolling through kind of by hand, learning to use the tools of the editor. So, um, um, in this assignment, somebody asked, uh, in case you can't see the, the chat, um, whether we have to touch the, HTTP, the, the header file, the HPP file or not. Um, in this assignment, I don't believe that you have to. Um, so I think everything is there. That might not be true for all the assignments. You might have to add the, the declarations of some member functions or something like that. But yeah, for this assignment, I'm pretty certain that that is true. So you won't actually have to edit um, any of these, including I also already gave um, all the private member variables and things. That might that probably won't always be true as well for other assignments. You might, might have to define some new vi member variables um, for the simulation uh, and maybe add some new member functions and things. So, 
but I don't think so for this assignment. Um, um, so anyway, I'm gonna define the get memory base address and get memory bounds address. Oops. Hopefully you can all still hear me. My, my machine kind of froze a little bit. Having a, some performance issues here. Can, can you guys still hear me or did I go away? Okay, well, somebody said I'm, I'm having some performance issues here, so um, I have to stop and, and restart here. Yeah, it's getting choppy. I, I, I may have said before some at some places that uh, I don't have the best um, internet uh, in my um, my rural Texas uh, location here, so things can get a bit choppy. Yeah, I'm definitely having some problems here. Um, Yeah, I've actually lost my mouse here. I'm gonna have to stop. <laughs> so, um, yeah, I'm not certain I'm gonna be able to continue on here uh, unless until I, I have to stop and get this problem figured out. Uh, I just did a search there. So there's the git memory base address. So yeah, you, you probably won't have to implement these either. So they already return the memory base address and the, the memory bounds address, but we're not initializing them correctly. So um, so if we go over here to initialize memory, Um, your, your very first thing is that um, you just need to um, um, and, and this is described in there. So since these are uh, actual member variables um, and, and when you initialize memory you're giving what, you're given what the values of the base address uh, and the bounds address are, and then you're not given the memory size, but you're supposed to calculate that. So you can infer what the size of memory is because it's the, you know, the bounds is the end of memory. So the end of the memory minus the base address gives you the size, right? So all we're saying in step one is, um, is um, so it, here, again, if you're not used to using C++, um, the, the name of the parameter that I use in this function is the same as the name of the, uh, the, the variable, member variable. So there is some ambiguity here. Um, so this is a common way to do this. Um, so by using this, which points to memory base address, this disambiguates the, the, the context here. So this says that I'm, if, if I don't put the this here, it's gonna assume that I mean that the parameter, uh, the, you know, which is a local variable that's passed into the function here, right? But by doing this, it knows that I mean my member variable. So, so now I'm gonna assign the value that's passed in as a parameter into my member variable, right? If that confuses you, another common thing is people sometimes just don't use the same name. So you, you could say, uh, you know, my memory base address. Uh, you can change the name of the parameter to be my memory base address. And then you could say memory base address equals my memory base address, if, if that makes sense, right? So that, that's another common way people disambiguate here, right? But anyway, for step one, um, I, I was basically saying you just have to initialize the memory base address. memory bounds address 
and the memory size. So the memory size though, um, is, um, is a function of the, the end to minus the beginning. So, you know, you can, you can calculate that by a simple subtraction. So the, the, the memory size here should be 700. And, and, and again, like I said, I'm, I might have to stop and restart here because my machine, something's happened to it. So, um, but um, I'll just finish this here. So um, the size would be, Something like that, right? So, um, so what you'll find is if you just do those steps, and, and again, I can't can't mouse in here to change over, but we'll see if I can build. So if I rebuild, so so here since um, since I didn't since I only changed code in the hypothetical machine.cpp, it only had to recompile that, and then I was able to relink together my unit tests, and now I can run my unit tests with Control Shift T. And now if we look in here, I'm not going to be able to, to look at this. Um, but yeah, now if you look at in there, um, um, you'll see that it's going to be passing the first three tests, okay? Um, all right, so and, and I, I'm going to have to like try and stop this machine and restart it because um, um, something has happened here. I'm going to try and pause my recording here. So, get, so give me about five or 10 minutes um, to try and reset something so I can come back. I'm sorry about that. Oh, and hopefully it hasn't been too choppy so that people can hear things. But um, let's see. Uh, I might not be able to pause the recording, so you might hear me working on stuff until I do some things. Um, Control back. 